In the book of Revelation chapter 6, at the beginning of the tribulation period, there is what's called the four horsemen. Now, the first horseman is the rider on the white horse. Most people believe that this is the Antichrist. It's still not astonishing to me how the Christians are so wrong about so much that's written in the Bible when it's written in black and white. You know, it's, it's some particular and peculiar. When you show somebody something written in black and white and they get a complete wrong understanding about what that text means and you can show it to several different people and they all have different interpretations of what that text means. This is because they have not been taught what it means by a qualified, sanctified, acceptable prophet of God. In support of what I just said, I'll read a passage from Romans 10 and 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? You can't call on God because you have not believed in God. You only believe in Jesus. Jesus is the Gentiles God. Jesus is not the God of the Bible. Then it goes on to say in Romans 10 and 14, And how then shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? You haven't heard about the God of the Bible because all of your false prophets and or preachers talk about Jesus only. They don't talk about the God of the Bible. As it continues, And how shall they hear without a preacher? You cannot hear about the God of the Bible unless you have a preacher who was sent from God, not from the school of theology or wherever else he came from, taught by another Gentile who don't know his ass from a hole in the ground. All of these things have to apply before you can even begin to understand the God of the Bible. Now, to my point, this guy in the video initially is talking about how satanic Beyonce's video is in the uh, Renaissance album, okay? And he goes on to tell Christians about how they shouldn't listen to Beyonce and how they shouldn't go to her concerts, this, that, and the other, because her music is so satanic. It appears that this one is ignorant of what satanic really is, just like most other Christians that I've talked to and talked about. Christians seem to think that they're the only ones that got anything right about God when actually their God is Satan. Anything or anybody beside the God of the Bible is a devil. Jesus is a devil because he's the God of the Gentiles. And the Gentiles, according to the Bible, make sacrifices to devils. That means that they honor and worship devils, okay? By definition, Christians are Gentiles. I'm telling you all this not to ridicule you, not to uh, disturb your center of peace. I'm telling you this so that you can correct yourself and save yourself from this untoward generation. But back to the subject matter at hand. I went into this topic because this guy mentioned the fact that most people believe that the rider of the white horse is the Antichrist. Let me show you what the Bible says about that, then you decide. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible, I'm going to start this in Revelations 19 and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren and have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So it's telling you right here that don't worship me because I'm bringing you this truth from God through the testimony of Jesus and he's saying that Jesus is the testimony and the spirit of prophecy. In other words, Jesus is a prophet, not God. This Serving of God said, worship God, not Jesus, basically. All right, 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Revelations 19 and 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Now I ask you, based on what the Bible has revealed thus far, you're dealing with somebody whose name is the Word of God. In other scriptures, you will find 
that Jesus is referred to as the Word of God. Matter of fact, it's my determination from my prophetic abilities that the Word of God is another name for Jesus. But since you worshiping the Word of God and or Jesus rather than God, you have turned the Word of God into a devil because you don't acknowledge the God of the Bible. Anyone who does not acknowledge the God of the Bible, by definition, is a Gentile. And Gentiles have a synonym, which is heathen and pagan. So this guy is absolutely wrong when he says that he that's riding the white horse is the Antichrist, unless he's actually referring to Christ as being anti-God. I believe I totally understand why this guy says that the rider of the white horse is the Antichrist. And that's because of Revelations 19 and 12 where it says he had a name written that no man knew. No man knows the name of God. God is not a name. God is a title. Nevertheless, no man knows the name of God. Although I know the name of God, which I cannot reveal to you, you must study and learn that name for yourself. Anyway, the ones who have not studied or have not been taught by a prophet of God, will not know God's name. Nevertheless, people run around talking about, you've used the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Okay, well, you're using the name of Jesus, which is thy God, in vain. And you have not used the name of the God of heaven and earth in vain, because you don't know it. And then this is followed up by the second horse, which is a red horse. And this red horse represents bloodshed, war, uh, uh, anarchy, all sorts of different things like that. Murder, hence the color red. If you take into account that none of these appearances by Beyonce on these horses occurred before 2012, you have to assume that she's been made aware of the fact that tribulation did not start until 2012, okay? And so now, these horses that she appears on represent different aspects of Revelation. The first horse being white, the second horse being red, the third horse being black, and the fourth horse being pale are the different warnings that the angels gave. These spirits were possessing the powers to bring particular turmoil upon the earth. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 6. Genesis 6 and 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thoughts, of his heart, was only evil continually. Genesis 6 and 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Revelation 6 and 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard a second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon. Take peace from the earth, and that they shall kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Revelations 14 and 16. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. 17. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, and her grapes are fully ripe. 19. The angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. 20. And the winepress was trodden down without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Now all this is showing you that the angel that was riding upon the red horse, the reason why the horse was red was from trotting down all of the greats, or all of the people that was on the earth, because God had judged them to be wicked continually, and every thought of their mind was evil continually. And if you look at the world today, you can see that for yourself. It's all evil that's being perpetrated on the earth by the rulers of the darkness of this world. And then this was followed up with the black horse, which represents famine, which is a natural consequence of what happens after most wars. Uh, there's economy that's bad, things like that. Revelation 6 and 5. 
And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. It has been revealed to me that these balances that were in his hand was the balances of judgment. This could probably be that this will all occur during the harvest, which that's what Revelation is referring to. And the harvest of our time is in October. Matter of fact, if you watch October, you'll find all types of profound things occurring in the world during the month of October, which is where my son is. And then after that, there's a pale horse. That's horse the number four. And this represents sickness, pestilence, disease, which is once again another consequence to uh, uh, bloodshed and bad economy and all these different things. So you have famine and all this different stuff, sickness, pestilence, and whatnot. Now, Beyonce, over the past several years, has appeared on all four of these horses, right? She's appeared on a white horse. She's appeared on a red horse. She's appeared on a black horse. She has appeared on a pale horse, which is the horse that is on the cover of her most recent album, Renaissance. So she is uh, supporting and encouraging this idea of getting drunk, having parties, having sex. Hey, I'm just going to have a good time. I'm in the mood, do whatever I want to do, things like that. Hey, okay. So how should we as Christians respond to this? Now, you might think as you've watched this video that I'm basically trying to be the Holy Spirit in your life and I'm trying to tell you that you should never, ever, 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 ever listen to a Beyonce song ever in your life again. But what I am saying and encouraging you to do is to be discerning, right? To do what I just did. Before you start listening to music just because it has a good beat to it, look up the lyrics online and really truly ask yourself, should I, as a Christian man, as a Christian woman, be supporting this? Should I be putting this in my spirit? Should I be listening to this type of music? And I don't see how you could read this type of stuff and come away with the answer, yes. I'm just saying it is very, very interesting that these things are all kind of correlating together. Now, with that being said, another thing that we need to look at is what message is she trying to communicate to the world with regards to this album. Well, there's one thing for certain. If you never listen to Beyonce again, then she may have some more messages that you can't get because you're not listening to her, because you have discriminated against her, because you don't have the capacity to discern what it is that she's trying to convey. What Beyonce is trying to convey here is something above the pay grade of most of these so-called preachers, which I call false prophets, because they very rarely get anything right. They very rarely can tell you the interpretation of the thing or the dream. So let me tell you, Beyonce is conveying the thoughts and the thought patterns and the religious beliefs of most of this crystal generation who, for the most part, don't believe anything to do with the Bible, especially anything to deal with religion. What you should know is that there is no religion associated with the Bible, only a misinterpretation of what is written. That is what we call religion. So when Beyonce says that she's just having fun, doing her thing, minding her business, not getting involved in nobody else's business, just doing her own thing according to her own free will. This is the mentality of the crystal and or the new recent generation, which I promise my God that I would minister to. And that's what I'm doing now. That's why I'm doing what I do. Not for self-aggrandizement, not for notoriety, because I always use the avatar. I never come to you in my first person because I don't want you, like people have done on many occasions, start to worship the messenger rather than the one that gave him the message. Then you have to look at what does Renaissance mean? Let me read that definition for you. Renaissance, a revival of or renewed interest in something. So Beyonce is renewing everybody's interest in the Bible, in revelations, in the signs of the time and the wars, and the famines, and the pestilence, and the other thing that Revelations talks about, because we are in great tribulation. That's why when you look around, everything you see 
is uh, suffering, pain, destruction, burning, gnashing of teeth, and so forth and so on, which is the quintessential definition of great tribulation. All right, again, a revival of or renewed interest in something, okay, and that something is the Bible and revelations and great tribulation. The synonyms for renaissance is revival, renewal, resurrection, reawakening, reemergence, which are all terms that are often used in the Bible. So this is what Beyonce is trying to get you to see the reward and or payday is coming. And it's very soon. This is a quest by the Creator for you that have done wicked or disobeyed the God of the creation to change your ways, to repent, to do the right thing, to follow God's servants towards salvation. Because the servants that you've been following, worshiping, to worship means to do a particular type of work for that deity, whatever that work is. Okay, I worship God by doing what I'm doing right now. And that is keeping my covenant with God and then telling you what it is that God expects of you. Problem is, most of you are going to do just as the people did during the time of Noah. When Noah was running around like a voice in the wilderness trying to warn the people of the destruction that was coming, and nobody was listening. They continued to do what they've been doing, having sex, getting married, partying, drinking, and all the rest of it. And that's exactly what you're doing now, and most of you will be doing the same thing when the end comes. I'm not talking about the end of creation. I'm talking about the end of the rule of the Gentiles. You know how the Bible speaks of when the time of the Gentiles come in? That means the end of the Gentiles rule, which that's, that's what we're in right now. And this is the reason why you practice Christianity, because, because the Gentiles have commanded you to do so by whatever it was that he did during the times of slavery in the United States. Most of you so-called black people worship devils and or Jesus. I understand what your problem is. Your problem is that mama taught you Christianity. That's all you've ever known. You were born in a Christian so-called nation under Christian doctrine, participating in Christian holidays, and it's nothing holy about any of the holidays. So you've been led wrong from the beginning. The problem is you don't want to accept that because it came from mama, and mama didn't intentionally tell you to do the wrong thing. She just followed what everybody else was doing, rather than taking the initiative on herself to find out what was right. Hopefully, somebody will, will be awakened, not woke, be awakened by this message and understand that I was sent to you from God to deliver this message. And if you need more messages like this in order to save yourself from this untoward generation, follow me, subscribe to my channel, and contribute to my ministries. And I will show you the way and how to save yourself. Until then, peace.